Hey everyone, Adam back here in the AeroWorks workshop and man, has it been a while. I know you guys have been reaching out, asking, hey, where's the videos? Where's Adam? Are you still working on the Super Duty? Yes, yes, and yes to all that. We still are working on the Super Duty. Had a tons of things going on, uh, both with family and with work. Bought another airplane. We've been really busy with that. Which brings up the point, if you're out there building experimental aircraft, uh, which I assume you are because you're watching this channel, uh, be thankful that you are because certified aircraft are a big pain in the rear. Let me tell you what, we're going to go into that more. We're going to talk about the other aircraft uh, in another video. You may even have seen some of the videos of, of us flying it or me flying it. Uh, but, but you're here to see the, the, the Super Duty. So let's talk about the Super Duty. So what have I got done in the Super Duty since we've last uh, been on video? Uh, I just recently, as in the last day or two, finished up the, uh, the fuel system from header tank to the engine all the way through. Uh, I contemplated a whole bunch of ways of how to do that and watched other videos and looked at the Viking videos and looked at regular light combing engine builder videos and just to kind of see how to rate or route the fuel lines. And on the Zenith aircraft with a lot of Viking engine builders, they just run it along the bottom. I wasn't crazy about that, uh, having really anything exposed, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that because I am also adding the baggage pod uh, to the bottom of my airplane. Not so much for baggage, but for looks and kind of the way that it continues that engine cowling right down into the fuselage. I think it just looks better on the Super Duty. So I'm going to take you through step by step, kind of show you where I routed things. Um, it's not perfect. It's not right. It's not wrong. Uh, I'll tell you why I did it where I did it. and. Um, and then we'll go from there, and then we're going to keep moving on in this build. Um, I did get, uh, we have one wing complete on the wing stand, and we also have another wing that we're working on, uh, skinning the bottom right now. That one won't take too much time, maybe a couple, three days, and we could have the right wing, uh, actually it's the left wing, all wrapped up. And then uh, it's really just all the small stuff. It's, it's getting wires where they need to go permanently, uh, doing the cables for the uh, rudder and elevator. Did get the elevator all mounted up, got the stops put in, so all that's done. So it's really just a lot of little things. It's that 90% it's that left of 90% done, 90% to go. So let me take you around the aircraft, show you the fuel system, and then we can go from there and uh, see where we get. All right, guys, well, as you know or may not know, the Viking engine starts back here in the back in the, in the good old hell hole. With some type of a header tank, there's been various types. I have the two and a half gallon aluminum header tank that's just aft of the baggage wall. That is really what feeds the Viking engine. The wing tanks feed into the header tank and the header tank feeds the engine through a series of fuel pumps and a fuel manifold. Um, here we have our fuel pressure gauge and some other things. That's been all covered in another video. So the fuel line that's actually feeding the engine what we're going to do here, this fuel line will actually be, it's the only thing I don't really have done yet is clamp this up. This will be clamped up to this rear bulkhead here. It'll cross over the top of the rudder and elevator cables. It's going to come over here. It's going to make a nice loop here. Call this the service loop. This is where the high pressure fuel filter is. And basically, these are those quick release, the Honda quick releases. So you can just easily take these off, swap out your filter, put a new one in very quickly, all with access through the, uh, the, the port on the bottom here. Now this will also be a Dell clamped into position, so it'll be firmly mounted and the hose will be secured uh, as necessary. But this is the basic layout. So it's gonna make this curve here, this loop. Then it goes through a hole in this back uh, bulkhead here goes under the control arm and then penetrates this seat bulkhead here. Now, a lot of guys are running stuff through the middle of here and that's fine, but on the Super Duty, uh, there's not a lot of area back here to run, you know, like through the middle channel as you'd want to, you know, just hey, let's just put everything in the middle channel because you've got a step and you've got some areas here where the cabling needs to go through. Um, now you could run it through the bottom here and then go out the sides um, but then you're just you're doing the same thing that I'm doing basically anyways and so let's go ahead and jump from where it comes out of here up in the front air and then we'll continue on all right so after continuing under the control arm it's going to come out here through this bulkhead 
I've got it Adele clamped along the side or the center channel here where it then enters below the seat, comes in under the seat access, makes a 90 degrees and goes out the bottom through a grommet. Now if we take a look down here below, you'll see that it exits the bottom of the aircraft goes through the red cube, this is our fuel flow sensor, continues on along the bottom here where we have Adele clamps suspending it and securing it to the bottom. And then it goes between the radiator up towards the firewall. And then what we will have is one more clamp up in here, but we're gonna wait to do that until we get the rudder pedal push rods all situated with the pass-throughs but there'll be one more clamp here and then most likely just an Adele clamp or a zip tie up here just to take care of some of the slack and then the fuel line continues in and goes right into the quick release on the engine now again these are those ones that you can take off like that they have an o-ring on there and they simply just click on so that's how we got the fuel line from the header tank all the way to the engine now again, this whole area down here, from here down, will have a baggage pod on it that will nicely camouflage and hide any wiring, fuel lines, etc. that I need to put down here. So one of the primary reasons I went with that, plus I think it gives a sleeker uh, transition from the front cowling and the radiator, and then it basically goes right into a baggage pod back to the gear strut mounting arm there. So it's going to look really nice when we get that put on. I've actually covered that in an earlier video. We'll be putting that on uh, fairly soon as well. All right, guys. Well, I know it's a little bit of a shorter video. I wanted to get something out, let you guys know that I am still alive. I am still building the Super Duty. It is a top priority, but, uh, you know, things just happen in life, and that's the way it goes when you're building your own airplane. They're not overnight uh, completion-type items. So thanks for sticking around i promise there'll be more videos coming out soon i want to get this thing done just as much as you guys want to see it get done if you're out there building your super duty or building whatever you're building keep going keep motivated and hopefully one day we're all going to meet up somewhere and uh, get to share our experiences building and flying these amazing aircraft so guys again adam with aeroworks i appreciate you guys hanging in there with me and we'll see you on the next video